Hey, you. 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 Good evening and morning to you. Star Citizen Salvage Play is here, and the big questions are, how much can you make in salvage? How does it compare to mining? Is it fun? The answer to that last one is yes. And also maybe. Well, what the hell does that mean? Let's talk about it. Like up, sub up, and ring up like a boss. To do something is to know something, so let's make like a tree and leave. <laughs> That was corny, but a little shopping is on the list first. It's good form to pack up for all contingencies, so pick up a multi-tool tractor beam attachment. That's extremely important. It can be a light SRT attachment and can be a light canister, at least one in the backup. Those two are optional. You can find these at Tammany and Sons and Grim Hex. I'm sure more locations will be added by the time you see this vid, but I haven't found them at any stations. Since that's the case, they should probably make them valuable to sell there, but that's another video. Also, CIG added a little something to help you out when you forget your multi-tool, which we'll take a look at a little later. Right now, you can head out to anywhere populated with asteroids and you'll find salvageable ships by following this icon. When you approach a ship, hit M to go into salvage mode. It'll have sections that are green, yellow, or red. Green sections are in good shape and you can collect the Recycled Material Composite or RMC the fastest from these green sections and slowest from the beat up depleted red sections. Derelicts typically have yellow and red sections so go for the yellow, scrape it all up, then move on to another ship unless there's no other ships around which right now in PTU there's a plenty. On a personal note, salvaging for me is a super chill way to hang out, get immersed and earn credits so I don't rush. but. If you chasing that Credicini Alfredo, then you want to get efficient at collecting RMC quickly. Left clicking fires and right clicking will switch between a narrower, more concentrated beam and a wider beam that covers more surface area. By default, your salvage beams will converge at the same point. If you widen the beams out a bit and create a small gap between them and have them overlap, you can cover more surface area without leaving gaps. It's super satisfying to extract everything and not leave a drop of outer hole in a section. To do this, hold left alt and use your scroll wheel to move your beams horizontally or alt left click to toggle it to vertical movement and use alt scroll to widen them out a bit. This way you can salvage in rows with a slightly wider beam with the second one lagging picking up leftovers. Then just take your time sweeping a hole until you're full. As you salvage, watch the extraction rate to get a handle on how fast you can sweep the area without leaving crumbs behind. Clean your plate, man. When you filled up enough for a one SCU box, unless you've made a change, which we'll see later, it should automatically eject it into your storage area. After your next box is full, you need to climb out your seat, move the first box with your tractor beam, eject the next box, move that one out the way too. If you look at the control panel, you'll see a box in the bottom right. You just want to make sure it's checked so it'll auto eject boxes and you only have to come down after you filled up two boxes instead of after every full box. If you went all the way out there and forgot your most important tool, the tractor beam have no fear. Now you can use the RMC to 3D print a multi-tool and attachments on the spot. This is noted to be a temporary measure so it's possible that if you're watching this vid a month or so in the future it may not be available but it's too cool not to show man. The goal is to fit as many boxes as possible to max out your credits. Stacking the outer cargo grid spaces first gives you a template for stacking boxes outside the grid. Stack them around the line neat as you can, not like those random Legos you be stepping on barefoot at 5 in the morning. <laughs> at least that's what I heard what happens. After a good hour or so, you should have at least 22 SCU stacked up in your ship. Could you fit even more in a ship? Yeah. But at this point, it might not be the best move to risk boxes clipping through or damaging your ship since the boxes that aren't on the cargo grid aren't the most stable. So now it's time to sell. Head over to your nearest TDD at Area 18, New Babbage or Lorville or Orison. Open up the kiosk and <laughs> oh yeah, in the current state of the PTU, having more than a couple loose boxes not on the cargo grid causes your inventory not to be detected. All the inventory. This will be fixed, hopefully by the time you're seeing this, but for now, we throw all the boxes on a Valkyrie. It did solve the cargo detection problem, but some other issue prevented us from selling. But we can still see the values and we know what we got for our time. 7,699 credits per SCU. You, you. By building using the cargo grid as a foundation, we were able to stuff 22 SCU boxes in our 12 SCU ship for a grand total of 169,390 credits. Not bad at all. The return for your time is competitive with mining, and I can see folks getting into this. 
On the other hand, right now, there's tons of derelicts laying around like AOL free trial discs. So presumably these are here to make sure we can test the shit out of salvaging. And I'm assuming dead ships won't be as plentiful in the near future. But for right now, hell yeah. Salvaging is a dope addition that makes you feel like you're actually saddling up for a job in the verse more so than other gameplay loops, which is great for some. Fun is subjective. In the same way that not everybody's idea of fun is a load up farming, trucking, or train simulator, not everybody's gonna be into going out scraping up holes, tier one or not. It's gonna be a tedious task for somebody like a hardcore combat pilot. But that's what's great about Star Citizen. Different strokes for different folks mean we're not all competing to do the same thing, but they still all overlap in one way or another. Pirate outfits will try to capitalize on salvagers' work, which will cause at least some salvagers to hire escorts and will draw bounty hunters, which will at some point affect the price of fuel and munitions in given areas, as well as the price of salvage, which will influence bulk RMC commodity traders' bottom line and shift their focus in commodity types and reduce demand of other commodities and so on and so on. It's another paver on the road to beautiful things in the verse, and I'm about that life. I'm also about showing big boss love to the excellent executive producers of this joint. Thanks for keeping the lights on and the bandwidth cracking. Hold on, Mike Alvira, saucy one, Commander Blackout, JP Stravinsky, Eyes Open 2018, when you gonna get to 2023, man? John Arcadian, Mito, Still Legacy, and Burning Chrome. Big thanks, executives. You are very much appreciated and your suits are very well tailored. Big 7-Up salute to all the fans supporting and rocking with your boy. Salute to the mother, Buster Boy, Commander Dr. Digital, Zayla Maru, Commander Leviathan, Soul Time Out, Fo Twin, Twin, Train Man, Rob, Dead Eye, Dead Eye, Old Figment, Evil Weasel, Titan Prime, Crash Test, Commander Cool Whip, <laughs> Triple Awesome, Officer Extraordinaire, Nathan Manette, Giro the CEO, June Star, Carl Bajin, Waffle Iron of Doom. <laughs> Yo, that name, Abner Dune, Individual 11, One Hit a Quitter, Fair Gamer, Yo Diggity, Yo Doubt, Cyrus the Virus 8, Son of Oche, I Rise, and Sugar Bear. <laughs> Sugar Bear. Big thanks, Bambinos. My name is Dig, and I've been growing gray hair since high school. Fly dirty citizens, 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 citizens.